Welcome back. I'm Scientist Kate. This is Grade 3, Weather and Climate, Lesson 3.3, Seasons and Climate, Part 2. For this lesson, you won't need any materials. You'll just need your science brain. Are you ready to do some science thinking? Awesome. Let's go. Okay. Do you remember in part one, we were talking about how meteorologists take lots of years of weather data and they find averages. Averages are numbers that are in the middle that are easy for us to understand so that we can take a lot of data and boil it down to just one number so that we can easily compare it and understand it. We've learned that meteorologists show what weather is like over many years by taking many years of data and graphing averages. Next, we'll find out how they describe it. We're going to be using this book. It's called the World Weather Handbook, and it's called a reference text. A reference text is a nonfiction text that's full of information, and you don't have to read it from beginning to end. You can flip through the book and just find pages of information specific to whatever you're looking for. So we're going to start by using page 10. Do you remember what city this is? It's Anchorage, Alaska. Take a look at that picture. Try to visualize in your mind what the weather might feel like in Anchorage, Alaska, based on what you see in the picture. Do you think it looks hot or cold? Let's do some reading. I'm going to read this passage about Anchorage, Alaska to you, and I want you to be listening for information about what the weather is like in Anchorage and what its seasons are like. Are you ready? Here we go. Anchorage is in the state of Alaska. Alaska is closer to the North Pole than any other state in the United States. Anchorage has a short warm season from May to September and a long cold season from October to April. The average high temperature can be as cold as 23 degrees Fahrenheit or as warm as 65 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the month. Anchorage has some precipitation throughout the year, but there is a wet season from July to October and a dry season from November to June. The precipitation is rain when it is warm and snow when it is cold. Many moose live in Anchorage. During the cold season, hundreds of moose come out of the mountains into the city where it is a little warmer. They often eat the trees in front of people's houses and then sleep leaning against the houses to stay warm. Wow, I didn't know that about moose, did you? I've never even seen a moose in real life, so I would really like to see one, but that was not our purpose for reading. Our purpose for reading was thinking about what weather is like in Anchorage and what the seasons are like. So, what are some ways that weather was described? I'll give you a second to look back at the passage and find a way that weather was described by the author. Go ahead. Did you find a piece of information that describes the weather? Maybe it was about temperature or conditions or even precipitation. I found a piece right here. It says that Anchorage has a short warm season from May to September and a long cold season from October to April. I also found this. It says that the average high temperature can be as cold as 23 degrees Fahrenheit or as warm as 65 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the month. That's a way to describe the weather by giving like a range of temperatures. I also asked you to, to think about what types of seasons Anchorage has. Here's a piece of information. It says Anchorage has some precipitation throughout the year, but there's a wet season from July to October and a dry season from November to June. When you hear the word season, what do you think of? Yeah, maybe you think about the way seasons change in the place where you live. I think about winter, maybe during the winter season, there might be snow, but you wouldn't see that in the summer. And also leaves changing in the fall. Those are two things I think of when I hear the word season. Let's think about seasons like meteorologists and discuss the seasons where we live. So I want you to think about the seasons where you live. 
I live in Seattle, Washington. And in winter, it's chilly and it's kind of cold, but it's not freezing cold. You're not going to see a blizzard. You're not going to see like below freezing temperatures every day. It's pretty cold, but it's mostly really rainy. What is the winter like where you live? Tell me. Cool. So it sounds like there can be lots of different types of winter weather. Let's go to the next season. What about spring? In Seattle, the spring is kind of cool. Some days are cool, some days are warm, but it doesn't rain as much in the spring as it does in the winter. We have a lot of sunny days in the spring. What is spring like where you live? Great. Let's talk about the summer. My birthday's in the summer, so that's my favorite season. In the summer in Seattle, it's really warm and it's really sunny. We don't get a lot of rain in the summer. And the temperatures are nice and warm, but it, do, it doesn't ever get like super hot here, like up into the 100 degrees. So what is the summer like where you live? Cool. The last season is fall. And in the fall in Seattle, it starts to get gray again. It starts to cool off and we get a lot more rain. What is the fall like where you live? Yeah, usually the fall is when we here in the United States start to get cooler weather. All right, so let's think about these two graphs that you're seeing right here. Remember that the green graph is talking about high temperatures and the blue graph is talking about total precipitation, meaning rainfall. And we're not talking about Anchorage anymore. Look at the title of the graph. Now we're talking about St. Petersburg. So when is the cold season in St. Petersburg? Let's take a look at the green graph. When does it look like it's cold in St. Petersburg? Name a couple of months for me. Yeah, January, February, March, and then we're going to skip over the warm months and we're going to go to like October, November, December. Those are the cold months, the cold season. When is the warm season? Name the months when it's warm in St. Petersburg. Yeah, it's warm during those months when the bar graph goes up. So it's warm during May, June, July, August, and September. Now, let's look at the blue graph. Now we're talking about total rainfall or total precipitation. When is the rainy season in St. Petersburg? Name the months when you see the bars go up. Yeah, June, July, August, September. When is the dry season? Yeah, so January, February, March, those are the months when the there's less rain, and so we would consider that the dry season. Now, we know when the warm and cold season are. We know when the wet and dry season are in St. Petersburg. Take a look at this reading. Do you see that we're about to read about St. Petersburg, Russia? Great. So I'm going to read the passage, and I want you to be listening for information about the weather and the seasonal changes in St. Petersburg. And let's see if what we read matches the data we saw in those graphs we just looked at. You ready? All right. St. Petersburg is a city in Russia not far from the North Pole. St. Petersburg has a short warm season from June to August and a long cold season from November to March. St. Petersburg can get very cold and the warm season is not very hot. The average high temperature can be anywhere from 23 degrees Fahrenheit to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the month. There's a large river running through St. Petersburg. During the warm season, people swim and play in the river. During the cold season, the river turns to ice and people walk across it. St. Petersburg has some precipitation throughout the year, but the dry season is between January and May when there is less rain than the rest of the year. 
It rains on some days during the warm season and it snows most days during the cold season. Okay, so that's a lot of information in this nonfiction text for us to think about and sort through and compare to what we saw on the graphs. So let's talk about it. I wanna point out this piece of information. Do you see what I'm pointing to? It says that St. Petersburg has a short warm season from, um, from June to August and a long cold season from November to March. So from November to March, it says that it's cold. Oops. All right, this is also important information. During the cold season, the river turns to ice and people walk across it. Have you ever seen a river turn to ice before? I've never lived in a place where it was cold enough for a river to turn to ice because that doesn't really happen here in Seattle. So I would really like to see that. But I want you to notice that it says the average high temperature can be anywhere from 23 degrees Fahrenheit to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. 23 degrees Fahrenheit, if you think back to our temperature benchmarks, that's way below the freezing temperature of ice. So that makes sense that during the cold season, the river turns to ice and people can walk across it. So we're seeing freezing temperatures during the cold season, which is from November to March. So how is the cold season described in the book? I think we just answered that. It gets really cold, cold enough to freeze water during the cold season. So let's check it out. It says that the cold season is from November right here, which is right when it gets cold, to March. Do you agree? Yeah, me too. It matches what the book says. Do we see that on the average high temperature graph? Well, we do see that same trend November to March is when we're seeing the cold season. And take a look at the numbers. Here's 20 and here's 30. And we said that 23 is how cold it can get to freeze the rivers. And look right here. It does look like in January and February, it does get cold enough to freeze the river. So this data matches the other piece of evidence we have from the book. That's great. Now take a look at this. These graphs help us see how months that are one after another can all be one season. So what they did was they took 1980, 1981, and 1982, and they stuck them together, boop, 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 like they taped them or glued them together so that you can watch the pattern. So starting here in January, it's cold, and then we have a warm season, and then a cold season, and then a warm season, and then a cold season, and then a warm season, that's a pattern. It's a repeating pattern that happens over and over and over again. So even though weather can be different every day, there is a pattern to weather. Did you just see the pattern in the last slide? Awesome. The seasons of the years repeat the same time each year. So we wouldn't expect to suddenly randomly get cold snowy weather in the middle of the summer or in the middle of the warm season. And we wouldn't expect to suddenly have hot weather in the middle of the cold season. So weather can change every day a little bit, but generally we can expect it to follow the same pattern. Does that make sense? Awesome. If you have any more questions about um, pa patterns to weather, feel free to ask your teacher. I'm sure your teacher could give you some more information about that too. All right, so that's it for lesson 3.3, Seasons and Climate Part 2. I'll see you next time for lesson 3.4. Until then, stay safe, keep checking out that weather.